Hey guys, it's Web here. A few weeks ago, I took a look at Windows FX 10, which was a Linux distribution that was highly based off of Windows 10. The general theme, the general apps, all that kind of stuff, and it highly resembled Windows 10. We established that this was for users who wanted to easily get into Linux, but are very used to Windows 10. However, today we're taking a look at a different type of Linux distribution. Today, we're taking a look at Pear OS 8. Pear OS 8 highly resembles Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks. It even has the identical background colors, old style dock, the old style top bar, all that sort of stuff. Pear OS has since been discontinued. There's been many unofficial new versions. I think I've seen Pear OS 20. I want to take a look at the latest official version. I believe this project was renamed GMAC because Apple didn't like them using Pear OS. However, I could not find an ISO download of GMAC. So we're sticking with Pear OS 8, which is the official version that I found on the internet. Powering on the virtual machine here, we can see that the Pear OS logo is designed like an iOS 7 logo with a multicolored flat theme. However, other than that, we can see that it does identify itself as Pear OS 8, and we have options to boot the live system, start the installer, boot live and safe graphics, and boot the hard disk. So we're just going to boot the live system and see what we get here. Here we are. As we can see, the login screen looks very similar to a GNOME or Ubuntu login screen. However, the background is the same thing you'd find on older versions of Mac OS X. Clicking on Live Session User, we can of course click Sign In, and this is where we start to see the similarities. We saw the bar at the top slide in, the dock at the bottom slide in, and we can just see how someone might be fooled by this. Opening up the installer on the desktop, we can double click on this disk with a download. From here, this is an Ubuntu based installer that looks like macOS. So we can of course click Continue, Continue, Erase Disk, and Install Pair. Now the setup of this is not actually like macOS, it's just the standard Ubuntu installer. Now instead of having an installer where it shows off the features of this distribution, it just gives us a standard little window with a text-based installer. Now I believe if I remember correctly, this distribution is based off of Ubuntu 14.04, so this is several years old and is probably not recommended for use today. However, I do remember in 2016, Pear OS was my daily driver for about a month, so I do have some history with this operating system. Now, installation has finished, so we can of course click Restart Now. The shutdown screen is very similar to the Pear OS startup screen. We can see it does have the iOS 7 style Pear, and it has Pear OS on the bottom. When starting up, we have a Mavericks-like loading thing down here, but other than that, it's not very similar to Mac OS. Now the first thing we have to do is install VMware tools so I can get a nice 1920 by 1080 display. And so to do this we just have to follow a standard install tutorial like we would with an Ubuntu distro since this is an Ubuntu based distribution. And here we are after we've installed VMware tools, this is Pear OS 8. As we can see here if we open our computer we can see that we have this weird graphics thing here, but other than that this is Pear OS. So just generally taking a look at the look and feel here, we can see that we have that Mac OS Mavericks like bar as I said. We have our dock which does have older Mac OS icons and newer Mac OS icons like Contacts, Cydia, the Cloud, that kind of stuff. Now pre-installed there are actually a lot of Pear apps such as Clean My Pear which was made by of course the Pear OS developers. We have Pear PPA Manager which will not open. Pear Cloud, which is obviously not in service anymore because the Pear Cloud has been taken down. So if we go to click Create a Pear ID, it will open and say that we cannot find the server there. Opening up Launchpad, we can see that it sort of opens like a typical application, and it looks like a combination of GNOME and macOS's Launchpad. So pre-installed here, we have my, we have Calculator, Gedit, Screenshot, Terminal, Shotwell, Empathy, which is a messenger. Firefox, Pear Cloud, Thunderbird, Document Viewer, Pear Contacts, a DVD burner, Music, Pear Software Centers, a Package Manager, Clean My Pear, My Pear 6, Pear PPA Manager, Pear Updater, System Monitor, and System Settings. So we do have a lot of Pear applications. My Pear allows you to customize your desktop. So for example, we can change our desktop and add a computer icon, a home icon. We can configure our dock to be different, so we can change it to that side back to the bottom, anything like that. We can enlarge the dock, we can make it smaller. This is basically the customization that you would find in system settings. Notifications, you can select where you get notifications and we can use a desktop color for the bubble background. So if we click test, we can see that this does kind of look like a Ubuntu and a Mac OS notification. Hot corner is something that I really miss on my new computer. I might have to download something for that. 
However, we can use corners to open stuff like mission control, the desktop switcher, and we can add stuff like custom. System settings looks like Ubuntu, but since it looks like Ubuntu, it also looks like macOS's system settings. So we can see that we have background and you have to double click on this to change our background. And so we get a ton of different backgrounds, including this weird one that I find kind of generic in my opinion. The Files app, which is also Finder, again, looks like Ubuntu, but is themed to look exactly like macOS. So here we have those classic blue the blue folders as well as our computer stuff on the side where we can open file system and find all of our Ubuntu stuff. Now the pre-installed version of Firefox is Firefox 25.0 so it should work with a lot of actual websites but it's definitely unsecure and I would not recommend using this. I would try to download a newer version of Google Chrome or something like that for Linux. All ParaOS websites that are linked to this operating system are down like ParaOS.fr, the Pear Cloud, anything like that is just gone. Taking a look at some basic window borders here we can see that we have the red X the yellow minimize and the green plus and we can see that it does resemble 10.9 like I did say. Up here we don't actually get a full side view but we do have a little list where we can see all of our notifications and all applications which will show us exactly where this notification came from. So there's definitely less to take a look at here and less pre-installed apps than what came on Windows FX 10. So this kind of begs the question, why should I use Pear OS 8? And the only reason why I can think, and this is the exact reason why I used to use this in 2016, is because I couldn't afford a computer that would run macOS, and I could not get a successful Hackintosh on any of my computers. So I settled with using ParaOS as my daily driver for, I'd say, roughly a month before I decided to buy a MacBook. So this operating system is definitely for someone who wants to get into macOS, but they simply can't afford it, or they can't get a Hackintosh to work. However, since this is Ubuntu 14.04 and it comes with a pre-installed Firefox 25, would I use this in 2020? Probably not. I definitely don't think that this distribution is safe by any means. I mean, I'm sure you could get used to it and you sure I'm sure you could install software updates, get a new browser, that kind of stuff, but all that hassle definitely wouldn't be worth it for an, this old of an operating system. However, they did do a very good job at theming this to look exactly like macOS. One thing I want to take a look at is the Pear Software Center. I highly doubt this is going to work, however I was wrong because this is just the Ubuntu Software Center rebranded. I really thought that they had their own, but this is different. I'm not sure if this is just the app that I'm trying to install or the actual operating system, but we cannot install an app, so let's just try to install a different software here. So it appears like it's going very slowly just updating its own stuff, so we're not going to really worry about that too much. Up here we have what would be Spotlight Search, and it actually does look like Search. However, so if we type in Hello, it actually give us it actually gives us a dictionary, Google, and Google Maps. So that's pretty cool. It definitely does resemble. However, one thing that kind of threw me off when I first opened this was there's no bar that shows us that we're active in that text box. So I just kind of had to start typing and see that we have that there. So yeah, that is a basic overview and use of ParaOS. What do you think about this Linux distro, and would you use it in 2020? I definitely don't think I would, and that's coming from someone who used to use this as their daily driver. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, and I will see you all in the next one.